Plastic is choking most water bodies in East Africa, polluting the quality of water and infusing tiny microplastics into fish and other aquatic life. This is making it hard for communities to access safe and clean drinking water. Several organizations led by youth around East Africa are trying to instill the concept of a circular economy among their communities. Our quest for innovators takes us to South Sudan, the world's youngest country where the mighty Nile River runs through its capital city, Juba. Eco-Friendly Limited is a company that operates in Juba and focuses on four areas of waste collection, sanitation awareness, and environmental education, fumigation services, and cleaning services. Reports from UNICEF, the South Sudan government, and WHO indicated a cholera outbreak during the month of April, May, and June this year in several provinces. Such outbreaks are catalyzed by sanitation and hygiene deficits in communities, which are often linked to environmental threats, such as the dumping of waste. Andrew and the company have a plan to change this in the capital Juba by starting up a recycling system. Yeah, you know, I do believe, uh, uh, according to our slogan, we believe that, uh, you know, human in harmony with the environment. So we do understand that we stay in the surrounding and we have to make sure we keep the surrounding clean because anything that happened to the surrounding also affects us. And uh, last year, we came up with uh, an idea, we call it Environmental Friday. Environmental Friday is where we come up with, we drawn a tangible things. For, for example, uh, this is something we drawn last, uh, last year, okay? And uh, the message is clear that don't burn the trash in the area. You, you know, this book itself is going to cause some health issues. To be sincere with you, now we just collect everything, okay? Because even, even, even telling people to sort the garbage, it also needs time, okay? You can, you can give them the plastic bags and you tell them, put for me the liquid here, put for me the bottle here, put for me the, 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 the papers here. But at the end of the day, you find that all these things are filed in one. So you have no option but to dump it. But uh, our plan of 20, uh, 2023 to 2025, we are introducing what they call it three into three in one. Three in one, but also it will cause us both fat to educate the public about it. Boba will tell you, don't mix the, the plastics with the newspaper, or don't mix the, the plastics with the liquid, because this plastic we are taking it for recycling. Okay, it requires us also another fund, and also we require us also to educate them on how to separate the trash before we come and collect it. But for now, we collect it and we just take it to the dumping site. Economically empowering vulnerable groups in the community is key in talking about climate change. Teddy from South Sudan is working with Cornet. Under this project, mothers and young women are trained to make briquettes in order to have a livelihood. The briquettes are made out of trash like papers and other disposed solid material collected in the community. I love working with women, with children, like seeing women getting to another level, empowering them, and they are making sure that they become the people they always want to be. Because when you come to the community, you get to know that women are always being like down. Men always step on them and they're not sold the right way. And what motivated me like to come and work with these women? One thing is when you go to the climate, these women face a lot of challenges like being raped when, when going to look for firewood. And the other thing is forest deforestation, like cutting down of trees that affect our environment. Coming up with this project has helped us like to fight so hard in the climate of our community and the country at large. Because in this project, the briefest project, it does not require us like to go hard for trees, we use the available resources that we have. And we, economically, it has required these women like to be self-reliant. Like you, you make your own, then you go to the market, you sell, make your own money, support your family. 
and also like makes you to be independent. You don't actually wait from your husband. In total, Teddy is working with 53 women and 29 young girls. Their members earn money by selling the briquettes in the market. Working in groups can bring about considerable impact, especially while carrying out activities that combat climate change. By the shores of Lake Victoria in Tanzania, an initiative that started as a university student club has now grown into a non-governmental organization. Vitas Audax is from Mwanza, Tanzania, and is the managing director of Synergistic Global. Synergistic Global is a non-government organization based in Mwanza and was officially registered in June 2021. Moved by the negative impact on the environment by human activities, Vitas and friends decided to act. Lakini utafanyeje ama utatoaje elimu bila kufanya usafi wa mazingira wewe kama wewe. Ah kwa ndio kikubwa tukaja ukiona kwamba tunaanza tunafanya usafi wa mazingira katika miaro yote na tukimaliza tunawapatia elimu ya kuweza kufanya usafi wa mazingira. Kwa hilo tunaweza kufanikiwa katika baadhi ya miaro tumezunguka tumefanya usafi wa mazingira ah, na kuweza ku Victoria changamoto kubwa kwa sasa ni kwamba uh, sisi kama NGO bado ni changa uh, tunahitaji sponsor mpaka sasa tujapata sponsor tunahitaji partnership ili tuweze kuwa na muunganiko na baadhi ya uh, uh, mashirika ama uh, mashirika ama makapuni ambayo yanaweza kudeal na usafi wa mazingira na changamoto za mazingira kwa sasa hivi tunatoa wenyewe pesa zetu mikoni kuweza kujaribu kuweza kupambana na hii hadha ya uchafuzi wa mazingira. Kwa tunachokihitaji kwa sasa ni sponsor uh, ama grants mbalimbali za kuweza kudeal na mazingira ili tuweze kuona kama tunaweza kufika mbali zaidi na kuifikia jamii uh, katika lengo kubwa tunahitaji partners na tukama changamoto nyingine ni kwamba unakuta uh, katika jamii ambao tunaenda kuitoa kuipatia hiyo elimu Leo hii tukimaliza kutoa hiyo elimu tukafanya usafi wa mazingira kesho narudi unakuta uchafuzi wa mazingira na ili kutoa hiyo changamoto ndio maana tukaamua tuanzie kwa vijana watoto wadogo Arthur Mugenda from Tanzania is a manager at Environmental Management and Economic Development Organization also based in Mwanza Arthur tells us how the objective of his organization which was founded in 2005 is to equip women children and the youth with knowledge on climate change. So in environments, actually, we have a number of programs that are made of focus. For instance, we have the waste management um, project. That is the project where we normally uh, do uh, correct waste from households, from business centers, and from actually from, from households and the community is one of the targets in this area. We target to make sure that we, we, we would just create awareness to the community to understand what are their roles in terms of preserving the environment. So in this role actually we, we had a team, we had a number of, of, of teams uh, who normally collect waste from the household and from shops. At the end of the month, the community or the household contributes like fee 
uh, and that's enable the learning, the day-to-day -day learning cost of, 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 of that project. I feel like a mama, I feel like I'm going to take a small coin and get a discount. It's a bad thing. Why is it funny when I'm not Mwanangu Tunapofanya usafi kwenye mazingira kwa kama mazingira sawa tunajengea hata ile attitude kwa watoto wetu wakikua atakuwa na ile kumkumbuka kwamba nilikuwa kwenye mazingira usafi. Kwa lazima na mimi nihakikishe kwamba hata mimi nikiwa na kwangu nipo kwa mtu lazima kuwe pa safi. Kwa mtoto mle wangu ndipo kwa hivyo. Kwa kama mazingira yako salama akiona na yeye ndipo atakavyokuwa atajua kwa kama mazingira. Plastic made from fossil fuels also releases greenhouse gases as it breaks down contributing to climate change. But rather than waste ending up in landfills or lakes, Athar's organization is trying to instill the concept of a circular economy among the Tanzanian youth. They encourage the youth to recycle and reuse the otherwise waste material. The main uh, focus on that is to tell the youth, just to give them opportunity to develop their idea around making different things out of plastic which is actually uh, flown in the environment. Like uh, if you visit a middle office, you will just see outside the plastic booth. Uh, it's like a house that was built by plastic, but also you can just see the home garden where we plant uh, different type of vegetables in the plastic bottles. Those plastic bottles were thrown in the, in, in the environment. So for the youth outside the school and even in the school, this is an opportunity for them even to make money out of those home gardens. The movement toward a circular economy has picked up speed across East Africa, led by a network of youth environmental activists and innovators. In neighboring Uganda, the Ecobricks recycling plant collects plastic waste from the Masaka region and transforms it into useful household items. The owner, Andy Bout, a citizen of the United Kingdom, has also brought on several other young people to manage the organization since its founding in 2017. Yeah, well, plastic's a very visual problem. You see it all over being burnt on the side of the street, in landfills, in people's gardens. It's a very tangible visual problem. Uh, but it also is an easy one to add value to. So when I was looking at the research, there's a lot of value chains and different options. So it seemed like a good sustainable option uh, for a green enterprise that can create loads of jobs. So yeah, it, was, uh, it seemed like a no-brainer when you were really looking at it. Plastic is a very toxic product when left out in the environment. So when plastic's left out there, it can cause lots of uh, toxics to flow out into our waterways, into our food systems, uh, into our air when it is burnt at landfill or burnt illegally. So yeah, there are huge benefits to collecting that plastic, adding value to it and giving it another purpose, a second life. So that's what we're doing. Uh, we've gone through a carbon assessment through Climate Stewards and it was found that for every tonne of plastic we remove from the environment and save from being burnt, we're saving 2.6 tonnes of carbon emissions and greenhouse emissions being released into the atmosphere. So when you total up how many tonnes of plastic we're recycling here, the environmental impact is massive. And then when you add on that we focus our work, as we're based only 40 kilometres away from the lake shores here of Lake Victoria, we focus a lot of our collection around those shores. So we collect from the landing sites and the fishing sites, working with those communities directly, and also the islands on Lake Victoria themselves, uh, which never had any solid waste management systems in place before EcoBricks came along. So yeah, the environmental impact there is obviously massive in uh, saving Lake Victoria from suffocating with plastic waste. EcoBricks is now adding value to the collected plastic. The factory manufactures several materials from different plastics collected. The community has also benefited from the works of EcoBricks. I always say the biggest impact is when you can give someone an, a job. 
and a respectable income. Uh, that's where impact really happens. So income that they can spend however they wish within their, their needs and family needs and so forth. So that's what we focus on. So whenever we are buying plastic from the community, so every single kg we get in is paid for. Uh, and as we're growing now, our new processing lines that you've seen within this video are what enables us to actually put $10,000 a month directly into the community's hands, just through buying plastic. Forget about all the other costs around running the factory, just in buying plastic from the community, we can give them $10,000 a month. So that is a huge amount of going into the local economy and a huge amount of people that can earn wages from this. Flexible wages that they can do around other work or they can do it full time and work to collect a ton a month at 700,000 shillings. Um, so it's completely up to them. But it gives income, extra income, to uh, often those that need it the most. That's, that's the impact I like. Now, this job has given me a sense of independence because like um, in Africa, women are like, uh, we have a feeling we are supposed to be under men. Men are superior, they have to provide, they have to do this. But I'm not a kind of man who believes in being dependent on someone. Now EcoBooks has given me a voice and the power to be my center of point. Now I'm independent and I'm financially stable. I can fix my bills without depending on anyone or my family. I think for us uh, as Ike, being able to capture their stories and tell their stories on a wider scale for us is a start. Uh, but then also even as we prepare for COP27, we want to showcase these stories during the Conference of Parties. Maybe someone there will see this story and want to connect with these young people. So I think for us the dream or the goal or the vision is to say that if people see these stories, are they able to actually reach out and interact with these young people whose stories we are telling in this documentary. But then also at the same time, if there's someone who can offer them uh, support or capacity building in terms of training on how they can improve themselves, we are really open to that.